Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Untapped Podcast. My name is Jacob Gable. And my name is Jacob Wards, guys. Welcome to episode 113 of the Untapped Podcast. If this is your first time joining us for the show, first of all, thank you. We are thrilled to have you here with us. Guys, we have five main formats of our show. So first, we have Forging Fortitude episodes. Now, in these episodes, we cover our anecdotal experience with things like mindset and mentality. We then pass on tips and advice to you guys to then apply to your own lives. Next, we have physical vitality episodes. Now, in these episodes, we cover the physical side of our brand. We really get to showcase our expertise because you have two certified personal trainers here. Um, In these episodes, we cover everything to do with the gym, fitness, nutrition, diet, workouts, workout programs like 75 Hard, supplements, and then sometimes we will take trending things within the fitness industry, articles, topics, whatever, and we will give our thoughts and opinions on those. Great start. A lot of free game in those episodes. A lot of free game, especially with our trading mean live now, too. Yes, that's right. Especially for that matter. Guys, our third format is our breaking news format. The breaking news format is a current event-based format. Now, we go over current event current events, current articles, that type of thing, but we go over them and give solutions to them. So it's not the doom and gloom episodes that you see on some podcasts where it's like the world's ending. No, there's action steps we can take to fix this and turn this around in the world. You all know what I'm talking about too. I don't have to explain these certain situations that are going on in the world right now. Now our fourth format is the masculinity based format, which is called our Knights table format. Those are awesome. Some of my favorite episodes as well. We touch on bringing back masculinity in full. Now, keep in mind, I'm 25, Wartz is 25, Mitch is 23. Because of that reason, we're not coming to you at the top of the mountain, top of the pedestal, whatever you want to call it. The only perfect man to ever exist was Jesus Christ. Now, because of that reason, we are bringing masculinity back, but we are touching on how we can do it, but also how you can do it. If you're not a married man, or if you are a married man, and what you want to know and see from a masculine man. Now, Fifth format is our guest format. The guest format is when we sit down with an entrepreneur, fitness professional, athlete, doctor, somebody with a great story. Those episodes, we learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot, whether you know the person or whether you don't know the person, does not matter. A lot of value in those episodes. And our last thing to introduce is our producer and my brother, Mitchell Gable. Hey there, man. What's new? Back in action after a couple weeks. Two weeks off, man. Yeah. It's always weird. It's always yeah, weird. It is. So yeah. the break sometimes needed too. So For sure. It seems like it, it seems For like sure. it helps reset some things too. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, obviously we had a little bit of turbulence before yes. the episode that be yes. that began us we before did. slowed to, us down a little thanks bit. Thanks to Mitch and Mitch only. Yep. hundred percent. Definitely, definitely not you. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no failure to launch, ladies Mm-mm. and gentlemen. There was plenty of launch going yeah. on. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> Those of you that know us closely mm-hmm. probably know what we're referencing here. <laughs> I would hope they'd be able to pick it out from yeah. that description. There. Just say it didn't smell great in this room before we started. No, yeah, <laughs> no, it was yeah, it was hell. Yeah, that's for sure. We but, did we did have a power outage too. That's another part of the breaking news, right? Little little uh, or what do you call it? Cell tower outage. Cell I guess? tower outage. Yeah, I don't know. I guess yeah. China's trying to attack us or something. It's probably from our own government, but more than likely. Yeah, I yeah. Would, Elon Musk even tweeted he was like he was like this is a test or whatever he tweeted. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that's probably true. Also, probably. I mean, just for those of you that know, just buy a lot of guns, buy a lot of ammo, get ready. If something does happen, you need to be ready, Definitely. train all those things and go from there. Definitely. But, yeah, dude. Yeah. What's up with you? Not much, dude. Had a little bachelor party last weekend. That's the biggest reason we didn't record. And, uh, it took us about seven and a half hours to make a five and change hour drive on last Friday when we got hammered with all the snow here. Oh, okay. It yes. Was, uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it was a kind of a brutal drive too. We were in Lexington, Kentucky, dude. By the time we got there, we probably saw at least thirty vehicles off the road between just oh normal cars, eighteen wheelers that were jackknifed and stuff. I mean, it was crazy. We were fine. Uh, we luckily didn't run into any issues or anything, but probably at least thirty, if not more. Quite honestly, Illinois was a mess. As Gosh, which makes sense. Well, yeah. El- El- Illinois roads are in, yeah. in the shape of basically like, it looks like it just got bombed out. Pretty much, actually. Yeah. In a lot of spots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's it's, it's horrible. Yeah. Like, but brutal. But hey, they're uh they're a virtue signaling strong state. So. Yeah. Well, again, shout out to our Southern Illinois people yes. we've talked about, you know. Chicago. Yeah, I'll yeah, just say yeah, that. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago area, Springfield Pass, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. But um yep. but no, it was it was a really, really fun trip. We did a lot of uh distillery tours, five of them in two days. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. But a lot of fun, good trip, good little uh Away time right before my boys' uh, season gets started here, yeah. where 
the spring and summer just get real crazy real fast. Yeah. So definitely bear, definitely bear with the boys as we get going here with yes. your season and whatnot. Yeah. Because things are going to change and whatnot. We're probably going to switch up our schedule recording yeah. wise and all that. So yeah, we'll have to make some things happen, but we're going to make it happen yeah. one or another for you guys. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, guys, today for uh, episode 113, we got a little breaking news for mm-hmm. you. We're going to kind of touch on some different social media based topics um, or points rather. Um, but the overall idea is just social media and that desire to be liked through social media, you know, and it's, yep. uh, excuse me, it's a very prevalent thing right now. Absolutely. And just nowadays, mm-hmm. just kind of in, in today's society, today's world, obviously social media plays a huge part in basically everything, you know, for the most part, it's, it's pretty difficult to not be involved in social media in some capacity, you know, I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. The, in-person stores and things like that are fantastic, and human-to-human interaction is extremely important because um, that's definitely something that's lacking in today's world yeah. of all ages, too. You know, I the one thing that, like, older people like to always say, it's like, these kids don't know how to communicate with people. And it's like, okay, yes, you are 100% right. However, you guys aren't always great at communicating either. And I'm, I'm talking, like, older older generations, yes. you know? like. But at the same time, too, well, agreeing with you here, going mm-hmm. off that, is the thing with that is like these kids don't know how to communicate. It's like, well, that means you didn't raise the next generation correctly. Sure. That plays so a part there's too. So there's also an aspect of personal responsibility that should be taken by the parents right. of that generation as well. Like, oh, right. they can't communicate their own on their iPad. Well, give them time limits on it. Yeah. Well, and exactly. You're the one That's that my handed parents them the iPad yeah. to stop crying. Exactly. It's like, well, how do you think how do you think you're gonna solve that? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's that's all tied into the conversation today too. Definitely, for that matter. Yeah, and and even even past like our parents' generation, that's who I'm more still talking about because mm-hmm. sometimes they'll come from a place of like arrogance in mm-hmm. a way, and it's like that's not making me want to continue this conversation with no. you, you know. And and so it's not everybody by any means, and there are some kids that definitely know how to communicate and definitely can hold conversations. Yep, I'm thankful to be around mm-hmm. a lot of high school kids that are able to actually do that, um, you know, and and kind of in what we do. We have to be able to talk to people. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's definitely a positive. Well, and you can attest to the parents in that situation of the kids mm-hmm. that you coach. Yeah. And, whatnot, yeah. and the kids you work with because, that's again, that's what it really comes down to. Definitely. And not to mention, putting them in something like sports as well mm-hmm. also helps them get away from the social media yeah. when they're young, especially when they're younger. I mean, we're talking like we're talking like under 18 here especially. Mm-hmm. The negative benefits. We, I mean, I think – Personal, personal opinion, I think in 20 years we're going to see a study come out and the damage that social media has done oh, to like sure. young brains. Yeah. It's going to be massive. Well, it's, just, it's dopamine, 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 exactly. dopamine, dopamine. You know, you're yeah. just running the Next laugh, next video, yeah. next this, next, right. you know, next naked person, next, mm-hmm. you know, this person's jack, whatever. Right. The, whole, the whole list goes on. Right. And I can't even imagine. But the thing is, too, those kids get to interact with somebody like you, mm-hmm. or the other coaches you have there, the other mm-hmm. people you have there at Legacy. And then you actually get to speak with people. Same thing at Health Source. Yeah, we we have a like again. We see between sixty to eighty patients any given day or whatnot. Right. Every one of those conversations is meaningful. Yeah. So it's possible because everybody puts their phones away during that time too. Definitely. So it it encourages actual conversation. It's like, well, I'm coming here to get better. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, when they want to get better, they put their phones away, which right. is kind of an indicator of the conversation. Absolutely, so, and especially like with my team, like. I'll I'll have all the conversations I need to, whether it's with parents or players, but mm-hmm. I, I really do urge my parents to send the player to talk to me. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, if you got a question or a, a concern, a comment or something, you need to come talk to me. Absolutely. Especially at this age now. Like these guys are thirteen years old. So I got seventh and eighth graders on the team. Like you're about to head into high school. You need to be able to communicate not only with coaches, but with people as well. Yeah. You know, mom and dad can't just handle all that for you. Dude, so you true. Know? So, and yeah, they can't just speak in slang the whole time. Yeah, hey, right. bet, bro, and then yeah. that's all they say and whatnot. Right. Like, yeah, that's right. that's when you're like, okay, you're you might struggle in high school. Definitely, yeah. And it's like this is the time that you need to be stepping up, making the decisions yourself mm-hmm. to come talk to me. Like, coach, what can I do better? Right. Hey, coach, did I? I'm. Mean, how did I look last game? Right. That type of thing. How can I know? make the adjustment you're wanting to wanting yeah. me to make, or how can I get more playing time, or how can I pitch more? You know, whatever. Hundred percent. You know, and and you mentioned the sports thing. Like that's. A huge positive of sports, especially team sports. You Absolutely. have to communicate with teammates. You have to be able to communicate with coaches. So really going back to the social media side of it now, I think the number one point, or at least the first one, but I think this is honestly number one because I think it starts oh, with the curation of your your feed, your algorithm, your timeline, whatever. Um, 
we really do have a lot of control over what we do see. Oh, there, yeah. There is definitely a lot that is pushed at us, mm -hmm. but and the more you click on the things that you don't want to see or that you're not necessarily liking, the more you are going to see that. You know, so the curation of your of your algorithm is extremely important. You know, the more and more that I watch different content creators and fitness related stuff or business related stuff, mindset stuff, um, training stuff like that, um, the more and more I see that on my explore pages or mm -hmm. from people I follow. Because there's plenty of people that I follow and I never see their stuff. Never, like literally never, which is always kind of weird. It, but, it is but weird, yes, you yeah. know. And like, granted, I'm when I'm on Instagram, I'm not on there for a super long time at all. Right. I I look through the stories, you know, some of them, and then I go through at most maybe ten posts, or you, or you respond to comments and whatnot. On yeah, your own exactly. Posts and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. So then, and exactly. So I'm not on there a long time personally. So I'm not seeing all those people, but the people I do see are the ones that I consistently interact with, the, the ones I consistently comment and view mm -hmm. their whole video and things like that. So we definitely do have a lot of control over that, and that's why it's so important. If you go to your, your Explore page and you see you know, Bikini Girls and, and things like that, and you keep clicking on it, whether you like it or not, like literally like the post, if you mm -hmm. are consistently clicking on it, that's the more you're going to see it. The algorithm you know? and the AI or whatever program yeah. runs behind is going to see that. And and that's happened to me before. Yep. Like I've been in that I've I've been in that situation, you know, where it gets pushed more to me because I was clicking on that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and the more I've matured and it's like I don't need to do that. It's very easy to target the stuff to dudes especially. Yeah, 100%. Because of our libido and whatnot and the yeah, way we think right. and all that stuff. Yeah, 100% yeah. it's targeted Like if you see us. someone that you find attractive, it's yeah. going to be difficult not to not to go click on that. Yeah. You know which, what I mean? Which is why that discipline like sexually and just in, in general, like lust-wise, is so important when it Definitely. comes to that. Because it's so... I mean, real, real talk. I mean, if we're being honest, it's probably easier to get dragged into that stuff than it ever has been. Well, yeah. I, I mean, it's, we could open our phones right now and we it, would have it... In, Ten seconds. Exactly. Probably. So you have to have a certain discipline. Now, again, you're talking about like the surface level curation too. We're talking mm -hmm. about like interact with the right post. Don't click on the wrong post. You know, that type of stuff. Like, comment on the stuff you want to see. Because liking and commenting actually and saving it also sends it to stuff when you want to see it more. Definitely. You know, Definitely. like that's that's why I always and you and I both set this up on our stuff is like we literally have a friends post folder mm -hmm. on our saved because we go on like Will Bates, for example, or Connor or whatever. Yeah. We'll go on there. Comment, like everything, save it to our the folder of the friends folder and whatnot. So it then sends them more our way. Right. And the people we interact with and do that more, whether it's right. first one people ask two guys, whatever it is, yeah. we see them more instead of all the BS. And it helps them yeah. grow too because exactly. the, the algorithm yeah. will send it out to more people. Which is even then. cooler to see your friends win. Yes. Which, like that's a huge win of yes. social media. That's actually a positive benefit of, of yes. course. So that's like that surface level curation. Right. Like, Which that's is why we money. say to share the show. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If, if, you, if you believe we have good <laughs> content, which again, we do and we know we do. <laughs> So it's like if we that's why we talk about it. That, that's why like rating the show, leaving five star ratings and whatnot is huge because mm -hmm. then it curates it into other people's feeds too. Exactly. Sharing it. Spotify picks that stuff up, right? Pushes it more in the search bar and whatnot. That's that SEO, that search engine optimization, that type of stuff. Cool. Mm -hmm. So that's that base level. That's very simple stuff, all free, by it the is. way. Very simple. The next step, every app gives you ways to mo not monitor, but also like limit posts you see. So like if, oh, yeah. If, yeah, if, if you want to limit you know, stuff that is more crude mm -hmm. or whatnot, you can do that right. as well. Espe and especially, this is especially talking to parents because my parents had every different parental control option they could have. I don't think they placed all of them in, but at the time when phones were becoming a thing, because I think I got my iPhone 3G when I was like 15, mm. freshman year of high school, which is good they waited that late too, but anyways. I didn't have one until I had a license. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> it's, yeah. it's great. That's a great thing. Yeah. But the thing is, it gives you options, especially as a parent, to curate your feed along with yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're like, hey, I want to I want to hide certain things and whatnot, hide certain hashtags or whatnot, it allows you to do that type of stuff, yeah. type of stuff too. So you can go into your different settings and go to privacy settings or whatever whatever button it is. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to find, by the way. Like I'm I'm not I don't ha I'm not gonna look it up right now and just basically walk you guys through like a dog because I know you're smart enough to do that. But the point is, is that you can have other levels of it. So if you're still seeing that stuff in your explore page and whatnot. Honestly, what you could do too is click on the post, push not interested, yeah. see less of this post. Next one, not interested, don't see this post. Same thing on TikTok. TikTok, excuse me, TikTok allows it as well. Mm -hmm. Share button, not interested, yeah. gone. Very simple like that. Again, every social media platform is going to allow you to have more in depth curation yourself and also as parents. Because again, whether you want to deny it or not as a parent, it's it's important to do that. Right. It just is. Right. Like you, you can't you can't sit here and be like you your kid 
sitting on his phone for eight hours a day is a good thing. Right. It's just not. Right. Because you can see it in their social skills. I see it in their social skills. Oh, yeah. Whenever we work with athletes, where, where, even when kids come into Health Source and whatnot, I see it. And they're this. Oh, yeah. For those of you on video, me staring down at an iPad mm-hmm. like that. They're iPad and kids. And they're weird. Like, that's yeah. a thing. Yeah. iPad kids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then <clears throat> it, it's just like, and like the, what do they call it? Brain rot from the social media and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Not an actual medical term, of course, but it's right. one of those things that they're seeing because they just, like that attention span in a conversation like drifts away and they can't, they, they're nervously fidgeting with you and whatnot when they're in the conversation. That's why we're talking about the curation and how important yeah. it is and how easy it really is too. That's why I have the, uh, the you know, I've talked about this, but that's why I have the screen time widget on my home mm-hmm. screen as soon as I open my phone. Like I, I personally get like tweaked out if I start getting close to four hours on day. Yeah. Like mine is usually right around three for the whole day, you know, and, and I do that on purpose because I, I don't want to be on my phone that much. I don't want to be on social media that much and, and mm-hmm. things like that. So it there are easy ways to take that matter into your own hands. And and we just listed basically all the negatives that come with social media. Now, let's talk about a few of the positives. We've sure. talked about this. Business reasons, obviously. You can reach anybody and everybody within seconds. Mm-hmm. That's a really good thing. Something I do it is I, I get inspiration and ideas from other content creators. I've talked about that as well. Um as coaches, we, you and I, we can follow and view other coaches' posts and things like that. Brock Wilson, Jeff Levecchio, and then mm-hmm. plenty of other guys we don't know. Um, Michael Boyle being one and and um, yeah, compound you, I, performance. Yep, sent you like, a couple. Kyle Dobbs from compound yes, performance. You know, all, the, all those guys. All these different yeah, yeah. people. Um, and we can learn from them. You Absolutely. and I, we, we get to become better coaches the more and more that we we view and learn from these guys that are ahead of us in the journey. They've been doing it longer. You know, They're working with... Guys like Patrick Mahomes, you know, if you're Bobby Stroop and and athletes like that. Jeff is working with Kyron Williams and Tony Adams, you know, big time NFL players right there. Mm-hmm. They Brock and him have plenty of hockey players too. You know, Ivan Barbashev, that's a name all yep. of you St. Louis people will know. That Brock trains, Tarasenko. Yep. Tarasenko, um, Dakota Mermis. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. We get to learn from those guys. Now, those two specifically, we are fortunate enough to have a actual relationship and friendship with cool. those guys. Yeah, yeah. And they have treated us so well. Um but that's another avenue of social media is we get to do that. You can connect with tons and tons of people through DMs and things like that. And I'm not saying be creepy, you dudes that just swipe up on all the stories and stuff. <laughs> Gosh. Um, yeah, that's yeah, you got some other issues going definitely. on. Definitely. If you're just DM swiping all day long. Yeah, that's tough. You're tough so look. hot. Oh, <laughs> man. Like, dude. Yeah, that's the way you're going to get her, dude. Yeah, yeah. You'll drag her in with your, your hot DM. Exactly. She's got 150 others of those exactly. today. Yeah, yeah, sweet. You know, there's family things. A lot, mm-hmm. of, a lot of like grandparents and stuff use Facebook to to see what their grandkids and kids are up to. I think that's a good thing, you know. Um, I do think there are times where parents overshare their younger kids on social yes. media. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And they overshare like details and there's like pictures of license plates and addresses and stuff. It's like, be a little bit smarter of the, the pictures you're posting. You know, I get it. Your kids look cute on the back of the car or whatever, but your license plate is right there. Wonders of having Mitchell as a friend, too. Well, sure. Fr- brother, friend, you know, I get it. Exactly. Because he is very adamant about us talking yeah. about that stuff, hey, too. He, like, he's yeah. my brother, too, dude. Oh, good point. Yeah, just yeah. not by, yeah. Come on now, this guy. Just, um, yeah, not bound by blood. You know, so, whatever, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those are, those are some positives, you know? Yes, There's very real 100%. positives to those things, yeah. you know? But you're, I actually wanted to real quick just agree with you on that point about mm-hmm. the children. I... Be intelligent about what you post. Definitely. What like what's in what's in the little corners of your pictures? Right. What, what's what's here if you have children? You right. know, are you are you just showcasing them all over the internet for the, the pedos right. and whatnot? We know are on the internet and stuff right. like that. Because again, they're a kid. Like cool. Like let, let's yeah. let people see them in person. We don't like. I don't, yeah. Well, and I I like I don't I'm even not, mind. I'm not saying don't post them. You know right. I, but, but just be conscious yeah. of what yeah. else is in the picture exactly. is kind of my point. There. It's it's just intelligent though. Like yeah. you, you and I even made even make sure that in our content when we, we filmed together. Oh yeah, literally when we did that two three weeks ago now. Yeah, we made sure stuff that certain stuff wasn't in. Yeah, the content right just, or again. just other people too. Like not everyone. Yeah, you want to be like, cognizant. Yeah, I don't necessarily mind. Like if I happen to be in the background of someone's video or something like that, like sure. I'm not going to get tweaked out about that. But some people don't want to be in that, you know. And so when I'm filming, I try to just again be conscious of what's going on around me whether that's in the gym or out of the gym right. you know if i'm flying my drone around right. i know one people might get tweaked out about a freaking drone flying over their head but like 
I'm not just gonna be filming random right. people's cars and stuff like that. Like I'm not gonna do that. You know, that'd be crazy. That yeah, would be just crazy. Doing, just doing espionage on that's people. That's probably yeah. against the law in it, some it way. It has but. to be in some way. Yeah. yeah. I, the FAA has many of that. But, but anyway, anyways, yeah. But against the law. Oh, oh, oh. So is everything that Biden is doing right the, now. The glasses. But he's not being charged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ten million illegal immigrants. Yeah, well, that that's a whole breaking news on. So. Holy shit! Yeah. Anyways, yeah. the point. So moving on to point two about this. Yeah. Another thing about social media that not necessarily negative, and I, I want to make this point here. It's not necessarily negative, but it it can be something that you let be a negative in your life. Mm, so nat- like n- naturally, the the point of this is that social media, the usually the most popular people. This this is a generalization here of the most popular people are the ones that are the most jacked. They're the most handsome. They're the most beautiful women. That type of stuff. They're usually the most popular. Just yeah. a lot of the times, outside of like business people and blah blah, blah etc. Yeah. The point is, social media people in general, they're usually good looking people. Sure. It's it's common. They're jacked. Whatever. So my point here is is that some people, they there's kind of two angles of this. One, some people see that, and they use it as like this harsh comparison against themselves, mm-hmm. which, as we've talked about in past physical vitality episodes. You won't ever look exactly like somebody. No. You can look like your best self, but you cannot emulate somebody's physique down to the micro no. level. You it's, just can't. it's just not possible. Yeah. It, it's not that's not a realistic thing, and you should not lay your hat on that right. at all. So if you're on that side of things, for that matter, girls too, that comparison side of things, she's so thin. Like I have I have these love handles, or I have this, or I have this with my hips, or I have cellular, whatever. Like you, you name all the list of things that girls might talk about with that. Mm-hmm. You got to understand. You can. Everybody's going to be attractive in their own different way as long as they take care of their health and their fitness and their mental. Yeah, they're going to be attractive no matter what if yeah. they take care of that stuff. If you're confident in yourself, yeah. you're going to give that off. People like confidence, exactly. whether it's guys looking at girls or girls looking at guys. Like exactly. confidence is one of the number one attractions. Yeah, you well, know. Well, and imagine, imagine this. Imagine like a five eleven girl trying trying to be one hundred and thirty pounds. Yeah, exactly. And like being frail, right? And like trying to match a girl who's five Four, three, yeah, five twenty, yeah, or one twenty, yeah. or whatever. Five twenty. Five twenty. Ooh, ooh, ooh. In- that was like, what's her in- name? English is tough. That's like a uh, shoot. Uh, what are you talking about the one? I, the meme I put in. Uh, Al oh, Ali. Yeah. Al, Al Weezy. Al- <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's she's ooh. probably five twenty. He's five. Whatever it is. Anyways, the point of, we're not gonna the go monster. on that tangent again. The monster. Yeah, the creature. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the point is, is that there are girls I've literally heard be like five eleven, like athletes, mm-hmm. compare themselves to like a five three one twenty girl. Yeah, it's like I, I hate to break the news. It's not the same. Yeah, you can still be very beautiful. She can still be very beautiful, just in a different way. Yeah, like Which you might be fifty pounds heavier. Exactly. Quotations. Than you know, her, and and you, know? you and you and I could probably test this too. But most of the time, I've met the people that can curate their social media feeds the best are a lot of the times men. Mm. And because now, I mean, you got to think women want to be the prettiest women want to be the most beautiful and whatnot. I, I have a realization. I, I have an under, I should say an understanding that I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be Ryan Reynolds tomorrow. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I, I, I could run a bunch of gear and whatnot and hope for the best, but it's not going to happen. Right. You know, and I'm not saying Ryan Reynolds is on gear. I'm just saying he's handsome. The point is, is that. You have to be careful if you're a girl, because I literally talked to a patient at HealthSource about this, how she got sucked in mm. by social media and all the other moms. If there was a fit mom, cool, she'd be like, oh my gosh, I had a kid. I don't really look like that. So if you're catching yourself in that loop, mm-hmm. and it's because that's the thing, it's going to add stress. It's going to distract ladies from your mental here. It's going to then harm your health and fitness even more because you're looking at that. So if you catch yourself in that cycle on social media, mm-hmm you need to nip it in the bud. Either get off social media or you need to take these steps that we talked about with curation and go from there. Yeah, or or also something kind of on a different side of that exact same idea. And this, whether you're a guy looking at other guys, a girl looking at other girls, and you find yourself comparing, you also need to be realistic. Are you putting in any work mm. towards trying to even look like that or trying mm-hmm. to get better for yourself? Because if you like the mom thing, you know, I, I'm sure it's hard to get that physique that you want to after you've had one, two, three, however many kids, you know, and like, I don't know, but I'm just saying, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is difficult. However, are you taking steps towards trying to get that physique you want or trying to look the way you want to after that? Or if you're a guy and you just had, you know, 
shoulder surgery or something like that. And so you're kind of limited in the gym or maybe you completely stopped working out, which is not necessary, even if, if you have a shoulder surgery. Correct. So plenty that you can do. Yep. Um, but like, are you taking any steps post-surgery, post-rehab to get to the physique you want? Because if you're not, then your comparison, like you have nothing to back it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. But same going kind of back, it would be like you and I who are six two, six four, looking at Mitch. Mitch, how tall are you? Four three? Whoa. Something like that. Man. Five eight. <laughs> looking or us <laughs> looking at yeah. him at five eight. And and what do you weigh right now? Like one sixty five. Okay, yeah. So he can look really good at one sixty five, one sixty yep. even, one seventy, whatever. That would be like you and I being like Oh, I got to get to 165 to look good. Obviously, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's the same I, idea. I, I would be a literal, like, what would, you would look what, bad. What do we call it? Uh, what's the, I don't know, anorexic victim, yes. essentially? Yeah. yeah. That's, Either that's one what, of us yeah. would. It, it's, it it's, would it's, not yes. look good. It would look unhealthy. Yeah. You know? So it's the same idea as earlier you were saying a 5'11 girl looking at a 5'4 girl that's 130. Like, it's the exact same idea there. Sorry, Mitch. I know you're not 4'3 or whatever I just said. <laughs> um, the apology, new man. Huh. Hey, man. Wow, new day. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new wordsy. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. Those people are going to get the most likes. They're going to get the most views. But you can't you can't idolize those people. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can emulate some of the things that they do. You can you can try to follow in their footsteps to a certain degree and things like that, but you can't idolize those people and then just wallow in the fact like, "Oh, I'm never going to look like them. Like she's so beautiful." Yes. Like He's freaking huge, you know, whatever. Like, he's such a good hockey player, or, you mm. know, like things like that. Like, dude, you, you you can't do that. Yep. You have to be your own person. So yes. The number one thing. You have to be your own person. You got to be authentic. You have to be realistic about the work that you are putting in or that you are not putting in. You know, you got to be honest with yourself from that standpoint. So social media, that is, that's maybe one of the negatives of it in a way is that it's going to showcase the best looking people, you know, because all of us, like to look at aesthetic looking people, guys and girls. It's the sad part is for, yeah. for us, it's probably like 99% dudes. What? That we look at on social media. Oh, 100%, yeah. dude. Like, I, it is. I, I, just, I just like comprehended that in my head. Yeah. And I was like, wow, <laughs> I'm gay. Like, like, that's tough. Confirmed, confirmed. I didn't want to be a homo, but apparently I am. <laughs> Damn yeah. it. Yeah. No, but like, you're, you're honestly not being wrong. Yeah. Or like, you're not wrong. Right. Which, which actually, that's also like, a non-degenerate thing to do 100%. because like we're, we're going and supporting those dudes too. yeah so the point yes. yeah, it's, it's funny but it, yes. the point remains it's like we're not looking at ass ass cheeks all day like, <laughs> i mean honestly why is ass cheeks so funny dude like <laughs> well unless you're looking at dude ass cheeks oh uh, that image just popped in my head why did you, you see say like, that like brad martin or something oh like <laughs> why brad martin no <laughs> Gosh, that was the first <laughs> cheeks that came to my mind what in the hell Oh, Mitch, my. who are the first dude ass cheeks that you see every day beside yourself? <laughs> what does that mean? I work from that's, home. That's such a wild question. I don't know. He what? said Brad Martin is his. No, when well, that I popped mean, you, in his head, that. you know what I thought of? I thought of that Giga Chad meme where it's like the <laughs> crudely drawn like stick figures yes. and the Chad has like this absolute shelf. That's <laughs> what I thought. Of when, Just a when dumpy. <laughs> <laughs> The, the 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 meme is just caked up. <laughs> <laughs> back, getting back to the point oh, here, man. like you're right though. Like yes, we we are looking at. I mean, yeah, mostly dude stuff. I don't even know See? a better way to say See? that. Like like that's the thing. It's like shit. Yeah, but again, but again, it's productive like, at if, least. If, if, we're <laughs> if we're if we're if we're being honest too, like whether or not we've met these guys too, like a Pershawn or a or a Wade and whatnot. Mm -hmm. like, you've actually talked to Wade yeah. and whatnot, which yeah. is cool too. But like even those guys, like we interact with them and support them, like mm -hmm. a David, or like especially like guys like Connor and JT, like we're yeah. having them up all day long, a hundred percent, not dude. like all day long. Yeah, that's and that's I would rather be doing that than spending my time looking at degenerate stuff. Right. Like right. honestly, I just would. Well, and like looking at those those couple creators you just mentioned, Pershawn and and uh, Wadey Davy, and then David Torino, like their stuff just gets me hyped up. Like it literally makes me want to stop what I'm doing. And just go out and start filming stuff because yeah. it's just like it, it it gets those creative juices flowing yeah. in me. And there's there's not many things that do that like that. Yeah. You know, the podcast is another one of those things. Our content is one of those things. Our business is one of those things. 
And it's like there's not many things that give me that feeling where it's like, like, like that is sick. Yeah, let's you know? put the foot on the gas pedal and push it to the floor. Yeah, and it's like yeah. I want to put my own touch on something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's productive. Yeah, is the biggest thing. What we look at, it is productive. Probably, if I had to guess, at least ninety percent of what we look at on social media is productive. You know. Yes. So yeah, it. It just it comes down to being disciplined and diligent yeah. with what you are liking, following, looking at things like that. Yeah, and and again, I wanted I wanted to mention here too, like the good side of that comp- the comparison aspect mm-hmm. and whatnot, because I I forgot to mention that along with like the negative aspect of mm-hmm. how girls guys we like compare differently and whatnot. I wanted to mention the good side too. If you do see these creators and or influencers, whatever you want to call them, mm-hmm. and you look at their content and then you you use it as fuel to get better. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did that. I can do that better. Yeah. And then you go do that. Yeah. Because that's what you were talking about. It's like, for example, an athlete. Like any most people that listen to this probably can relate to the athlete aspect of it. You see a dude doing something like for example, I see some some guy doing something in a hockey game. I'll try that. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. For sure. No problem. Makes me better in the hockey game. Mm-hmm. Same thing if you're a young athlete, baseball, hockey, whatever. If you see something and then I mean, this guy's practicing six, seven days a week. Yeah. Why the hell can't I? I mean, dude. Going back to one of our guests here, Matt Adams. Like, exactly. this dude is 36 years old, trying to mm-hmm. earn his way back into the big leagues. He has hit four times a week for the past, I don't know. Um, let's see, it's February now. Long time. I, at least four months since the season last year ended, something like that. Um, at least four times a week. He's lifting, he's doing his Pilates, he's working out. Like, all these things. The diet is right, the focus is impeccable even compared to last offseason i've talked a little bit about that however my point being like that dude's 36 36 age jokes aside like he's 36 he's putting all that work in he's he's putting more and more work into his craft something he's been doing his whole life and now and for those of you that care like he has a tryout with the with the diamondbacks arizona diamondbacks here uh tuesday so tomorrow when you guys are hearing this Mm -hmm. you know it's a that's a huge deal he has earned that opportunity you know, and I have all the confidence yes. in him that he's going to go out and show well, and and hopefully something great comes out of it. But then I'll look at some of my youth players on my team, other guys on other teams in the facility. They they can barely hit once a week. It's like you say you want to play this game, you say you want to play at the level that we expect you to play at, because our facility, like our expectations, not only say, for us coaches, teams are good. our our yeah. teams are very good, and there's a reason for that. We're disciplined. We have high expectations. They are coached hard. I, as a coach, am coached hard as well by the guys above me. So it's making me better, which is then in turn making them better. But you're telling me at 13 years old, like, you can't go up and hit somewhere? You can't get your dad to to throw you some front toss or play catch with you? Something like that? Maybe that's something for your dad there. That's a whole other story. And yeah. I also understand they can't drive themselves, so there are limitations there. But I almost guarantee you, you all have a net, you know, whether it's a hockey net, or yeah, we have a baseball net, and whatnot too. lacrosse yeah, net, all of it. a basketball hoop. Yep. You don't need a football field to throw the football or practice running routes. Yeah. You know, like there are so many things that you can be doing by yourself. But you're telling me you don't you don't want to, you don't you're too tired or you know, you don't have the time. Like, bro, you're 13 years old, you have the time. Yeah. You have the time. And not to mention if you're the parent listening to that, like when when I'm a dad, my kid comes to me and asks, Dad, can I go train with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you, son? A hundred percent, dude. Yeah. That's going to be one of the oh, best feelings in the world, too. You know, I'll, I'll actually, my afternoon's canceled now. Okay. We're going and working. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, that's a priority as a parent. You know what I mean? Oh, like, like, come on. I can't wait. Some of my, you, some of my uh, yeah. favorite memories from my childhood, and dude, I remember this so clearly. I'm getting goosebumps already right now. Every single day. I would be waiting in the garage as my dad would come home from work with both of our gloves in hand. We played catch almost every single day. Like I literally can picture it all right now. And I know he's going to get a big smile when he hears that, but like I was eager to do that, you know? And and yeah. for whatever reason kids nowadays like they just a lot of them don't have that don't have that drive. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like you say you want to play at a high level, but you're not showing. Talk about showing a field that. session there. Yeah, no kidding. Man, no kidding. Dude, yeah. Good memory though, man. Like that was important 100%. to me. You know, and he was always willing to. Yeah. Always willing. Like there was it was never an issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when I'm a dad, when you're a dad, when Mitch, when you're a dad, like we're all gonna be like that too. Because I'm sure you two have memories like that too with your dad. 100%. You know? Yeah. Even if even if it was just, 
hey, dad, can you get us to the ice? Can you take us to the rink? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, are you taking us to the lesson tomorrow? You're taking, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, and it doesn't always have to, sometimes like I didn't play football in high school or anything, but hey, let's throw the football around. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he did that all the time. It doesn't yeah. have to be yeah. practicing for the sport, but like get outside. Yeah. Get active. Yeah. You know, teach your kid how to grill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Teach them how to change a tire. Yeah. It's all these little things. It's interact with your kids. It's interact with your people. And that's that's kind of what we were talking about really before we started going through the points was just being able to talk to people. You know, and that's that's the that's part of the negatives of social media is it's gotten people to the point where they can't talk to people. Right. I know we already talked about that, but anyway, I just kind of well, went off on a the path thing there. the thing is though, is like you're right about this is because that again, like you said that, that kids, you're not seeing them have as much drive. Mm -hmm. Again, what does that come back to? We've yeah. talked about the major, only the baseline foundational unit of American values is mm -hmm. the family. Yeah. Is now again, it shouldn't just be mom and dad as we talked about. It's we're talking community, grandma, grandpa, School, aunts, uncles, yes. schools, everything. It should be all connected. Now, when the family unit as it is now is taking a hit like it is, now, again, because of multiple factors, including social media. Mm -hmm. So all this loops back into th this. Social media is just an arm of, the issues, arm, of, the, of the issues we have going on it's right now. a very now. good point. It's an arm yes. of it. Yeah. Like, that, that's what's crazy. Because yeah. if we just solved social media, we'd have now seven other issues we then have to chop off, At too. At least. I mean, so that's, that's, again, why we continue to say attack the home first. Yeah. In a, in a good way. In a good way. Yeah. yeah right. I, I don't mean like, Build what, the I, I don't mean like what's been happening for the last 50 years yeah. by our government, our piece Build of shit the home, government. Maybe. Yeah. That's like the, they've actually attacked the home purposely yes. because they're pieces of shit. Right. Um, and need to be hung. But, anyways, that's not the point. But that's why we always say come back to family unit because that mm -hmm. solves all the other issues. Yeah. It's the same thing as if a doctor, as we talked about before, they treat the symptom and not the cause. Yeah. And are the actual, like, what, what did Wyatt say? The, the what and the, the why what versus the why. Exactly. Yeah. Like that same concept. If a doctor just treats, Oh, you have like this, you know, leg issue going on. Here's a pill for some pain. Yeah. And you don't actually look at their hips, back, ankles, ankles like, feet, anything. Yeah. So that's, yeah. it's the same concept. Right. Us trying to chop off social media is not the starting point. The starting point is the home. 100%. The starting point is the family. 100%. That's what leads to all this social media stuff. That's, that's why kids can even have access mm -hmm. to the degenerate stuff that's on social media because yeah. the homes allowed it. Right. Truthfully. Right. Whether or not that's because maybe both the mom and dad have to work. So they're not around to set rules or whatnot, or they mm. just get lazy because they're like, ah, I don't want a parent. Right. Let's look at my phone. Right. Here's the iPad. By the way, so you're you stop crying. a complete loser if you're ignoring your kid for yeah. your phone. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Anyways, so third point here, kind of to wrap up the, the social media tangent, so to speak, is the idea of the real presence in life from you, mm -hmm. me, or wow, pointed at me. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay, sorry, sorry, Us, guys. My maybe. my mental issues kicked in again. Yeah, you know the ADHD <laughs> makes me an idiot apparently. Um, but in, anyways, Mitch, Mitch, you got something to say to that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean okay. nothing again, at all. <laughs> again, he's he's seen it all of his life. So yeah, I don't know. But anyways, so me, you, Mitch. I mean, our actual presence and who we are is who we are to other people in person. Yeah. And and how we are even right now. Mm -hmm. That's 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 why we we have only had guests in person too, for that matter. Yeah. Like because that's the real person and mm -hmm. whatnot. And again, like we've talked about, social media can be great. We use it as a tool and whatnot. Hundred percent. Every day. Purposely. Yeah. In with intent. Mm -hmm. So that's the big thing there. Now, again, outside of that, if you're gonna essentially talk the shit you know, talk the talk, walk the walk type thing, you need to be doing it in person. Yeah. I mean, dude, you, you and I can attest this. We're so hard on ourselves when it comes to not only physical tasks, but also just tasks in the business and whatnot mm -hmm. too, which is important. We yeah. should we should be that way 100%. But you you even had sent me a message and we, you were like, dude, let's 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 do some hard shit. Yeah. And again, most people would be like, you already guys already do, do hard <laughs> stuff. We, we work like, out every day. It's like, uh, that's pretty baseline, but yeah. whatever. You know, pretty Which dumb. maybe maybe that is a starting point. Maybe we shouldn't hate on that as much. No, it yeah. should be a good starting yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of realize that. Yeah. Yes. Again, so that's that's the thing is like you were like let's 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 ramp it up a notch, essentially physical wise. Yeah. Why not? Like let's train like an NFL running back. Yeah. You know? Like I literally said, that. I'm yeah, like, literally. dude, I don't know why. Yeah. But I'm just like 
super tunnel visioned on something like that. I know. Like, how fun it. would that be? That's because we saw a Christian McCaffrey video. Yeah. Them training. There, there were some things in there where I was like, oh, dude. Okay. I'm not, this I'm is the, just to look crazy on video. Or I, something. I will, I will <laughs> say this. When it comes to celebrity trainers and NFL trainers, there are some like quack movements they throw Definitely. in there and whatnot. Now, yeah. again, like, if it gets some results, they're ge- already they're sure. already genetically gifted as it is. Sure. So as long as those athletes work hard, they're going to be yeah great, like Christian McCaffrey and whatnot. Sure. So it's like, and or Mahomes for that matter too. Yeah. It's like it's same thing, but there are some like movements. I'm, we're both like, uh, okay. It's like, like, did you have to have the stability ball for that? Or <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like, like, that's so true. It's yeah. usually the stability ball too. And you're it like, is. You're like, why? Speaking but, of, they're th- really really quick. Just because we're talking about athletes training with stability balls, Derrick Henry has a video of him doing decline push-ups. So his, his no, th- no, this is actually insane. Like this talk okay. this is a testament to his stability and strength. So his feet are on a stability ball. Mm-hmm. And then he is and it's like raised up a little bit and his hands are on a band wrapped around like the safety part the safety bars of the rack and he's doing decline push-ups. Mm. Yeah, I'll have to get the video from the guy that showed me. Because it's actually insane. I'm I'm convinced he actually like isn't human. I think he's becoming more human now that he's getting older and whatnot. Yeah. But again, that's a running back position. Like, yeah, exactly. Getting the shit beat out of you. But anyways, like, again though that that also like that's talking the talk and walking the walk. Oh yeah. Like at at, at the core, athletes are who we see as like it's very obvious that they that they walk the walk. Mm-hmm. If like and it's very obvious the ones that don't too that are oh, just yeah. off genetic potential and they're like that genetically gifted. And they're just they there. get passed up. Exactly. They get passed up. Exactly. Yeah. Or or they. Do something stupid and get out of the NFL. Mm-hmm. You know, or, they, or they're hurt all the time, bro. Literally, there was a there was an NHL player that, for example, doing something stupid and just relying on your genetic potential, and not hard work. This guy on he's an NHL defenseman that was either a prospect for the Coyotes, Arizona Coyotes, or he was on the team. Mm-hmm. Literally, to his Instagram story, posted a line of cocaine, tequila, all lined up on there. And now they're putting him on waivers and t- put, kicking him off the team, which is exactly what they should do. Exactly. Like how but stupid do you have to be to do that? It's it's stuff like that. Like that's that all that all relates here because and you and we you can use that as a, a tangible example mm-hmm. because you like of all times now you have to walk the walk a hundred percent as we've talked about before. Like if there's any time to start, it's now. Oh yeah, um, without a doubt. But it's but it's also like you have to if you're going to go on social media. And show how perfect your life is or whatnot. You better have that perfect life on the back end. Yeah. You you better not just be putting shit out there and saying you're doing it and then not doing it. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, went on this crazy run today. And then you like faked it, just drove around yeah. and whatnot. And like yeah. that was your pace and whatnot. <laughs> like that type of thing. That's it's pretty- like, why was your pace two and a half minutes <laughs> for seven miles? It's kind of weird. <laughs> Again, you got to be an idiot to turn on your watch if you're gonna like fake it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again, again, extreme example. But like, like going on social media and being like, "Dude, I just ran a half marathon," and then like, there's like water on their face. It's not sweat. It's like they dumped a bottle of water on top of their head. That type of thing. You know, like it's it's stuff like that. Again, extreme, funny, whatever. But if if we're going to be the people on social media that are providing the good aspect of it, you also better provide be providing that good in person. To Definitely. other people around you. Definitely. Your personality online and in person should not be different. Absolutely. Is what you're saying. Absolutely. You know, it's yeah. it's be authentic on your social media with what you post, with what you make, things yeah. like that. And you should be that exact same person yeah. in person. And don't be know? a Hollywood weirdo. A what? A Hollywood weirdo. Like, a, like an influencer or something like that. Like that's super, or like a celebrity that like, you know. On the surface, looks super cool, but then like sacrifices oh. demons behind the scenes and yeah. whatnot. You know that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, maybe not that one. Yeah, yeah. Like don't. Yeah, yeah, we're not about that one. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pass on that one for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just it, it comes down to being authentic. You mm-hmm. know, we've said it a couple times here, but it comes down to being authentic. You know, if you really want people to believe in what you're saying, if you want to build a community, if you want people to follow you and pay attention to what you say and what you do, then you have to be authentic because it's pretty easy to get a sense of inauthentic inauthenticity you know it's it's pretty easy to mm-hmm. to catch on to that you know if if we sat here and talked about exercise and how important fitness is and things like that and a healthy diet but we were out of shape yeah we look like a pile of whale blubber yeah you know wow okay but but no one would no one would buy our training exactly no one would want us to coach them no one would even listen to these podcasts you know what i mean but we are able to walk that walk that you keep talking yeah. about. Not to mention know? we curate our content toward that too because we do that all the time. Yeah, exactly. So it's what, exactly. We, it's what we do so we can right. curate our content toward it. 
Right. So that can then help direct people. Right. Whether it's to us or whether we just help somebody on a one video or whatever. Mm -hmm. Cool. Like exactly. sweet. Exactly. You know, they saw that one movement. Maybe they took it into play or, you know, maybe they saw your inertial waves you're doing at the parking garage. They're like, yeah. oh, I've never thought about that. I have a parking garage near me or something like that. Yeah. Then boom. Yeah. Next thing you know, they're gone. They're, it's a great place to. Because you're being authentic. Space. Yeah. yeah 100%. Yeah. yeah. Which is, again, so I, I remember it was funny. Wyatt was talking to me in the office and he was like, is words at a parking garage? And I was like, no, it's his parking lot, actually, of his house. <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with him. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's his crib. Yeah. It's okay. Looks yeah. like a castle behind Oh, me. yeah, it does. Yeah, it's a cool yeah, hotel. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's just, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Being authentic, it's pretty easy, actually. It really is. It's, it's very simple. It's just that social media encourages the opposite yeah. in a lot of and ways. And that's also, last thing I'll say here, that's also to say, like, it's not saying you can't change as a person or who you are. You know, if if you're in a, a changing period in your life or something like that, your social media can definitely reflect that, you know? That's part of being authentic is, actually, is showing the changes. You know what I mean? It's like, actually a great way to grow on social media too for that It matter. is, it yeah. is. You know, like um, I'll give you an example of myself is I, I put my um, my in-body scan on my, on my story. You know, it's been a long time since anyone has seen me over 200 pounds or at the 14% body fat and things like that. And I was just like, hey, I'm trying to do this right now. Like I'm not trying to look like how I looked this past summer or anything like that. Like I'm, I'm trying to do this. The body fat is up. That's, you know, that's just going to come with what I'm trying to do right now. But it's being authentic. It's it's telling people what you're doing. You know, there's a lot of people that follow you that want to see what you are doing. So show them. Yeah. Be real. Exactly. Show them what you're doing because it might help them be like, okay, you know, I'm I'm trying to gain weight as well. And I was kind of freaking out about body weight going up or whatever the case is or the calories that I'm eating. Just it feels like a ton. But, oh, I see Jake doing it. So, like, okay. Maybe maybe I am sure. doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, so it's it's things like that. It's being real, showing people what you're doing, showing people what you're doing in your life and throughout your day. I'm not saying you got an Instagram live your whole freaking day or anything like that. But probably not that one, yeah. But mm. there are people that want to see what you're doing. It helps them. So do that. Be you. It's yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. You know? I love it, dude. Love it. So anyway, guys, that is our topic for episode 113. Now, at the end of all of our non-guest episodes, Money Mitch will ask us a Q&A question that is submitted by you guys, the viewers or the listeners. There's mm -hmm. a couple different ways that we would like you guys to send those our way. So number one, DM them to us on Instagram at untapped.llp. You can email them to us, which is extrications at gmail.com. I know it's a mouthful. So there's also an email button in our Instagram bio. Um, you can DM them to us individually if you want. You can text them if you've got our number to us. Regardless, get them to us. We take all of them. We give them to Money Mitch. He then picks one out that kind of has to do with the topic we talk about in the episode, or sometimes they're just funny, or sometimes it's just a question that a listener um, has submitted. So, guys, get those questions into us. They all go to Money Mitch, and then he picks one, and then he does his thing. What is a way to recognize when your desire to be liked is becoming self-destructive? What is a way to recognize Damn. when your desire to be liked is becoming destructive? Mm -hmm. You're a yes man, or you toe the line with everything, <laughs> or Ugh. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I think as far as, so towing the line, you know, I think an easy one to do that is something political or current event related. And if you are just consistently going along with the new thing, consistently going along with the new thing, whether it is a political thing, right or left, or um, I don't even know what an example would be. AI, like, newest trend with the yeah, AI. AI and yeah, AI. Um, you know, newest fitness trend. Oh, juice cleanses are out now. Yeah, that type of thing. yeah. yeah I'm the newest, get into these. the newest greens yeah. from a brand you've never heard of, or yeah, things like that. Even, <laughs> even things like cold plunges. You know, like that. That's kind of obviously there's a lot of benefits to them. Sure, but if you just happen to be the newest expert on it or something like that. It's because you got in one cold plunge one time. Exactly. That's why we don't claim to be experts on it no. we've been in it twice. No. And exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We're going to talk about our experience, but oh, we're sure. not going to yeah, yeah. we're not going to try to be the newest expert on it. You know? So if you're always yeah. going along with the newest thing, you're always getting, you know, emotional about the newest thing, or you're you're always the newest expert on the newest thing. Okay. That's that's self destructive because you don't actually stand for anything. You know? Um and then I would just say if you are consistently, and this this goes for guys and girls, I've definitely been prone to this, but 
if you're consistently feeling emotional about how you look or how you think you look compared to someone else on social media, if you're always just, if it gets you angry about yourself or gets you into a negative headspace about yourself, that's probably when you can recognize that you're in a self-destructive pattern. Absolutely. You know, if you can do the things we talked about earlier, where it can drive you, it can motivate you, it can inspire you, it can get you to try new movement, you know, zercher squats like what you've been posting or or a landmine squat to press or something new with med balls, you know, mm-hmm. all the things that you've been posting. There's a lot of people that have never seen those movements before, especially something like a zercher squat. Oh, yeah. It's a very, very not well-known movement. But so it might cause you to want to try that movement in the gym, you know? Right. And so that's a good thing. But if you are consistently getting angry, emotional, frustrated, sad, Siri can shut up. Sorry if you guys heard that. What a bitch. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're consistently feeling those things, then it might be time to take a little break or, yeah. or have an understanding that they're only showcasing the best of themselves and things like that. So, yeah, I'm, a couple ideas I had there. Great, great answer. Phenomenal answer. And I, I'd say, I guess, on my answer of things, if we're talking about like recognizing that self destructive uh, trend of, you know, desire to be liked, that type of stuff, I would say, recognizing that would come down to that's interesting it i i would probably say one of the things um that you can recognize in your own life is if you're basically seeding ground on every single conversation that you're in if that makes sense so the way i'll describe this is it's like the nice guy and the good guy conversation we we have Mm. if your desire to be liked in your relationship overpowers your actual thoughts mm-hmm. and you're just like, yeah, honey, that's correct. As a dude, as, especially as a dude. And you're just like uh, agreeable all the time with mm-hmm. her, even though like it might be a bullshit opinion or something like that from her. That's a good recognition there. Like that's a time that, that that's an indicator, like, and, and you'll probably notice it too. Like there's a lack of respect there. Cause I tried that path in past relationships and whatnot. And it didn't go well. Yeah. Cause I was basically the, the woman in the relationship essentially because mm-hmm. of that reason <laughs> Mitchell finds funny. I mean, it's, it's not wrong. But the doormat, the doormat. Yes, yeah. that's a great that's a great analogy. Um, and I, I would say too, like if let's say you're in conversations when, whether it's with your friends or whatnot, and you're finding yourself just kind of like agreeing with a belief that is just you know it's wrong, wrong, yeah, like very wrong. Like you're sitting there, like yeah, I don't really see any problem with the whole the whole math maps thing. Minor attracted persons. I think we can we can call them that. Like that's uh, a good example yeah. of something like okay, you probably shouldn't be seating ground on something like yeah. that, or even. Like, well, I mean, they are big. They can't really fit into an airplane seat. So, like, exactly. why, why not just give yeah. them a free seat? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you why, buddy. Well, what's what's the problem with being 350 plus pounds? Well, I mean, they die at 37. So, that's probably yeah. a bad if reason. That. Yeah. If, if that. Yeah. If they're lucky. Most times it's like 33, probably 35, yeah, right. whatever right. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we should all get vaccinated just so it stops the spread of it. it exactly. How how many men seated ground on something they should have stuck their their flag in the ground and said no? We knew walking into a restaurant if they told you to put on a mask, mm-hmm. it made zero sense whatsoever. Because then you just took it off at your table. Yes, and it's just like yeah. Well, I mean, I, I I'll 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 sit down with it, and then when I take a drink of water, I'll wear it, I'll take it off, and then I'll right. spray my germs everywhere. But then I'll put it right back on, so I'll be good. <laughs> exactly. Then I'll make up for that, and somehow catch the germs and pull them back and whatnot. Right. Well, yeah, um, no, they it, they automatically find their yeah. way back. Or to Or like the mask. use the force, like zzz, like yeah. Darth Vader, bring it back to you yeah. like that. Well, yeah, dude, yeah. The, the force isn't real. Uh, you got to be realistic it here. Yeah, the, uh, well, the germs they know where the masks are. Wait, so they come back and stick to them. Wait, what about what about Darth Schwab? I thought he was a Sith Lord. He, well, he is. I don't know if yeah. he has the force, though. Uh, maybe not. Maybe yeah. it's just like power of the world economic like, form. Or, yeah. Yeah. And like just Federal Reserve, idiocy that type of stuff. too. Yeah. And yeah, retardation, yeah. essentially. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa. The R word. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, wow. Okay. Whoa there. I don't even know if it's that. I think it's just pure evil. <laughs> yes. More than likely. That's yeah. It. Yeah. We have talked about it before, too. But like the point of the matter, though, is like. <laughs> Because it's, it's, you know, in your gut in situations like that too. I mean, if we're being honest, like 90% of the people in this country knew in their gut, the COVID shit was wrong. Yeah. Knew in their gut. Right. I mean, that's a very obvious and real example from 2020 and 20 to 2022. Very real. Again, we semi got it easy here in Missouri. Sam Page made, we have good made, people made that tough on us for sure Sam in the Page. county. 
Um, but we do have good people representing the citizens here. Right. Like we do, honestly. Yeah. The city doesn't, of course. The city is no. a pile of, of dog shit. But anyways, like it, the point is, is that we got a little bit easier. And then you hear stories about California, California, uh, New, York, New York, yeah, and what they had to deal with. Illinois there. is another one. Just yeah. Illinois crushing businesses. Yeah. And you're just standing there in your community. And you're rooting for it? And you're just... And you're okay with it? Sitting there like, oh, yeah, this is fine. We or just, turning the blind eye? We, we've been into this thing for a year, and we've crushed 700,000 small businesses. That seems like a good thing to yeah. stop the spread of a flu. Feels like there was something hmm. maybe in the 1930s and 40s in Germany that something else kind of like that happened, huh. where they were going into people's homes and smashing windows and... Uh, Something like that, that. That one thing, yeah. Yeah. That one World mm. War II. It, it, the, point, the point of the matter there, too, is like continuing on that. Right. Is then another example is a dad. Let's say you're a dad. Mm -hmm. And your 12-year-old daughter pulls up to her swim meet. And all girl swim meet because mm -hmm. she plays a girl sport. Mm -hmm. And then... Do you play swimming? Participates good, in good, girl good, sport? Good question. You just show up to swim. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, dude, I don't know either. <laughs> oh my crap! I don't know anything about swimming. I play swimming. You, I'm, I'm trash at swimming. You dude. swim swimming? Swim swimming? Mm. Mitch, that's just stupid. Dude. Uh, of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> what, what are we thinking here? Come on. <laughs> the the but it's like you show up and because that that was this is a I mean these are real. Oh, things. I know exactly where where I, you're going with this. This is 100 percent a real thing that happens right now. Yes, 12 year old daughter is going to swim meet and little Johnny who thinks he's Jennifer is now going to swim against your daughter mm -hmm. and whoop your daughter because mm -hmm. he's a male mm -hmm. and has better VO2 max capacity, better oxygen capacity, better physical strength, all of it, and you're going to sit there and be okay with it. I mean, look at Leah Thomas. Look at what happened exactly. with the NCAA you're, stuff. You're a dad of a college college woman mm -hmm. who's a D1 swimmer, and you sit back and don't say a word about Leah Thomas because not a single one of them did. There was literally a swimmer. Riley Gaines is the only one that said a word. Yeah. So – a college girl was the one who had to stand up for herself yeah. instead of Which is the fathers in the scenario. Exactly. She, she had to step up, go grab her, grab her balls mm -hmm. that she doesn't have because nobody else would grab them right. and go for it. Leah did, though. Leah, Leah definitely has them. Mm -hmm. And then you allow Leah, what, what, what's his actual name? I don't even know what his, what, what's his real name. Anyways, the point of the matter idiot. is that idiot, idiot, <laughs> idiot Thomas. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. Um, I'd, I'd probably change my name too then. I would too. Yeah, definitely. But idiot Thomas <laughs> proceeds to change in front of your daughter. Oh. Still intact, by mm -hmm. the way. Still mm -hmm. intact with his genitalia. Mm -hmm. And you allow it. Yeah. That's seeding ground. You say, well, honey, That's when your desire to like is overpowering. Yeah. Honey, you don't have honey. to look at him. Are you kidding? <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah, okay. <laughs> if, if your son is complaining about other dudes changing, then be like, all right, dude, like, don't look. You're, you know, turn it's, your back. It's, it's a men's locker room, bro. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's nasty in there. It yeah. is nasty. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it, you're you're 100 right with that, though. That's exactly where something like that comes into play. I don't even know how we got onto this topic, though. Like, of it was of the seeding ground and desire to be liked. Oh yes, because yes, because you're you, you don't, don't want to you don't want to ruffle any toes. feathers. Yeah, exactly. Don't want to ruffle any feathers. Exactly. So again, stuff like that again pretty obvious examples mm -hmm. you can take back and are you seeding ground on stuff that you don't agree with right are you seeding ground on stuff that you shouldn't be like for example you see that scale going up okay um i don't i don't feel healthy i know i don't feel good yeah maybe i should call my cousin or friend who knows this trainer or knows a trainer who, who is a trainer mm -hmm. maybe i should talk to them yeah and then you check yourself right instead of being like well i'll just go out and drink 15 beers the boys this weekend for the millionth weekend in a row mm -hmm. and pack that on then to probably the third day in a row probably the third day yeah. in a row as well right and then a couple cheeseburgers as well throw those right. in there too and then you're right back on where you were because mm -hmm. you want to be liked because they were going out right and you have to be yeah liked yeah because there's some, FOMO that comes into that exactly. as well you know that's self-destructive definitely on all those examples yeah absolutely yeah. yeah guys if you start recognizing any of those tendencies in your life like Check yourself, you know, make sure you are standing up for what you believe in, not what the group believes in, not what the news tells you to believe in, things like that. You know, if you start to, to catch yourself comparing to people or influencers or creators on the internet, like, are you putting in the work that could bring you the success that they have, whether that's a physique or the following or things like that? Like, are you, are you 
Are you doing the steps? Mm. You know, are you doing the work to to get towards that? If you're not, then you already have your answer. You know, so being authentic, being honest, standing up for what you believe in. I think that's like the three biggest takeaways from what we just talked about as far as that whole episode. Yeah, and you we know? gave the exact blueprint of those three. Yeah, in the episode yeah. too. Right. Yeah. So, guys, as always. Share the show for us, okay? Share it to your Instagram stories. Share it with your friends and family. Text it around. The more the shows get shared, the more we can grow, the better guests we can bring on, the more guests we can bring on. And just the more we grow, it helps our business grow. Untapped Training is live, as we have talked about. Guys, DM us about it with any questions, any questions that you might have. We have one-on-one training. We have monthly subscription. We're going to have different programs that are just going to be available to buy as well. Um a lot of really exciting things. It's very new, so we are learning along the way here how it's going to work and whatnot, but DM us any questions that you have. Um, we will be more than happy to answer them and, and get you on board. So share the show. Ask us about training. And guys, until next time, peace and love. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.